it was hot today in florida. it was hot the weather it's, is finally it's warming transitioning up. it's warming up we were blessed yeah, here in yeah. florida with a lovely spring mm. like it, this it's is probably the now. best spring this is the best spring we've yeah it's very over this was probably the best spring we've had in like 15 years mm. and it's over because it was almost 90 today and it's going to be basically 90 degrees every single day <sighs> i wish enjoyed it while it lasted 90 here <laughs> <laughs> yeah i tell you what that that little bit of spring we had though was beautiful it was gorgeous i will be missing those beautiful <laughs> 70 degree days and now it's going to be 92 and 98% humidity every day. <laughs> yeah. Super. Yeah, like bad time. Joe, what do you got? You're just sitting there. Yeah. Menacingly. Menacingly? <laughs> We're not saying anything. Menacingly? You're certainly not sitting there calmly. Wow. Uh-huh. A lot of stuff going on in my brain. Um, Matt, what's going on with you? I don't know. <laughs> What? Uh, Let me just about? deflect real quick. I forgot. I forgot to message. I got these in the mail, so that was pretty cool. Yeah. I got a. I got a slap one on aforementioned old roommate's new WRX at some point. So beautiful. Uh, that rocks. Hell yeah. For the audio listeners, I have Fake Racers podcast stickers now. They're so. not transparent, though, right? Correct. So got a whole bunch of them. Just a heads. And there up. was a very there was a very nice note uh, written in there too. So yeah. Aww. So, I'm gonna, we'll Did I get that. a note? I don't think I got a note. No, I got a box die of diecast cars. <laughs> That's right. They're all sitting on my dresser. Because nice. I am a child and my de- room is decorated like a 12 year old's. Um, I, I have, there's nothing on the was, walls still, by the way. I was going to say, I have right next to me off camera is my bookshelf of nerd stuff. Which is like, there's a couple <laughs> Bionicles and like a Shadow the Hedgehog Lego set that I was just showing. Like you off can, camera. If you look closely, fellas. You can see. Wait, where is it? Right there. That's the JTN cup. Oh, Heck where's yeah. that? I think it's on my dresser. I don't know. That, that bookshelf isn't finished, but it's more or less got the stuff that's on there. We're still trying to. We still got like a couple more things we want to get. Got the chair wise, though, so. and stuff. Got the chair, which I think you had Actually, last week. This, yeah, I had it last yeah. week, but it was new last week, and now it's been worn in. Yeah. Still need to send a, I forgot, I meant to send a video of the room to the parentals, because they wanted to see it, but mm-hmm. I'll do that. Anyway, it's great. I thought there was a cat in my room, but there's not. No, it's okay. Um, but yeah, everything's great. What else was I? Nothing, oh yeah, we didn't do a cold open. Yeah, it's Whatever, okay. it's fine. We'll come up with a better I mean, this one. is basically the cold open. This yeah, is the cold fun. open. Yeah. This is more like pleasantries. Yeah, not everything yeah. needs to be like scripted and... Ooh, look at us. Well, you oh, know us. So we script smart. the podcast for sure. I mean, I do. Yeah. It's very scripted. Yeah, I, I, scripted. Here, All the drama. This. I'm reading off of the lines I made, and I'm going to... Hey, Matt. How Daniel Hemrick is better than Jimmy Johnson. I'm... <laughs> that was bait. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> sure was. It was bait when I posted it during the race yesterday. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. just ignored it. <laughs> 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 I just ignored it. I was like, this is bait. Sure is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, this is Fake Racers Podcast, folks. Uh, we encourage you, again, as always, to make sure if you haven't already, like the video if you're watching over on Track and Turf on YouTube, or make sure you uh, like it and follow it on your favorite podcast platform. Also, make sure you're subscribed to Track and Turf. We promise there's more original content coming eventually to Track and Turf Media right on YouTube. So you want to make sure you're subscribed. That way, you're ready for it. I'm Joe. That's Davey. I'm Davey. And that's Matthew. Hello. What's up, brother? What's up, brother? Tuesday, Tuesday. Yeah, that's a dude. <laughs> special we teams, like dude. special plays, special players. Um, You know who was a special player on Sunday? And they kept giving him a lot of credit and a lot of shine during the broadcast. Who was that? That good old boy, Chase Elliott, man. He... Ooh, doggy. He, he was driving like a menace out there. He was aggressive on the track and... Clint Boyer wouldn't let you forget it, would he? Um, <laughs> my God. Uh, oh, this is a new Chase Elliott. He's being really aggressive. I, I want, you know, the narrative this year has been because Chase didn't win it all last year that this car doesn't suit his driving style. Um, mm-hmm. 
I would like to remind people that he won five races the first year with this car. And while you can say, say like, oh, for- Hendrick Motorsports, resources, they're better than everyone, he still won five races in this car, which is more than most drivers, believe it or not. Um, so I, I guess say, every did, driver did that's we forget won... forget that he was the only consistent driver in 2022? Every driver that's <laughs> won less than five races in the next-gen car, the next-gen car doesn't suit their driving style. So um, Ryan Blaney, a champion... Next gen car does not suit your driving style, buddy. I don't know what to tell you. You only got three wins in the car. I don't know. Um, Joey Logano, 2022 champion. Car doesn't suit your driving style, buddy. You only got four <laughs> wins in the car. Ah. But like, I, this is something that extends to all sports too. Like everyone is really obsessive about finding that reason or like finding like the like 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 when something happens, there needs to be a there needs to be a reason. There needs to be a solution right now as to why it's happening. Why is Chase Elliott not winning? It couldn't be like any number of factors that we you may know, not be able to broke see. Broke his like leg. That. It has to be that. Oh, it doesn't suit him. Oh, Alan Gustafson sucks. Oh, there he's getting the B equipment at Hendrick now. Like, why can't we just chalk it up to like, hey man, you just kind of like sometimes. Sometimes you just go through that. Sometimes you just get the. Sometimes gifts. you suck. Yeah. I am so glad you just brought that up because that drives me up the goddamn wall every yep. time. Like, like Dale Earnhardt Jr. didn't win a race for four years, and we still don't know why. Like, yeah. it's been over ten years since he that sucks. streak ended. Yeah, that's obviously he sucks. <laughs> and everything. But yeah, it sometimes it just doesn't go your way. You know, yep. the the vibes are just off. Um, but no, and I mean that applies to a lot of things where it's like I don't know. Sometimes things just happen. Like, yep. Honestly, that applies to texas as a racetrack anymore um for a lot of like like i feel like texas has gotten a lot better and still right now everyone's trying to label texas like why well, I, I didn't think it was that good but it put on a good xfinity race but it wasn't good it's never going to be good they just got to tear it down and like like the whole discourse around like stuff like that and i, I bring up texas because that's probably where we're going next um just like man like let it happen like let like let stuff yeah. happen not everything needs a solution or an answer and and like you know this past weekend the cup race on sunday i thought was like fine yeah it wasn't bad it was a little bit of a mess but that doesn't make it bad it was compelling um i don't know joe you you look like you want to say something no i i, I... Before we get to that topic, I just wanted to bring up Chase Elliott's uh, post-race interview because you made a good tweet about it. Um, <laughs> yeah, someone at whoever at Hendrick, up, but... whoever at Hendrick Motorsports hit the reset button on the Chase Elliott emoticon. Um, why? <laughs> Mid interview, he was like ready to show so much emotion, and then he like paused, and it was like he went back to. For the love of God, someone needs to tell Chase Elliott that it's okay to show emotion and it's okay to, like, do cool things. Like, you don't have to just be race car driver. And I know, I know, Chase, you just want to be a race car driver. And that's fine. Everyone out there does, too. But guess what? Being a race car driver comes with other responsibilities. And some of those things you're not going to like. Most of them you probably won't. <laughs> like, it's it's so frustrating because... Just- it's I'm when sorry. you 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 see someone have the, the world in their hand, right? And they just neglect it. Mm-hmm. You know, look at the ratings drop last year when he got hurt. And that's how and we were up all this year and people want to say it's cuz NASCAR's back. It's not. It's because Chase Elliott's back. Um cause effect. So it it's so frustrating to see like it's there. He wants it's like he wants to but he doesn't know how. You know, Dude, the whole framing of that sequence of it was the funniest thing I've ever seen. Like he wins the race, everyone, you know, the, the crowds cheering. Does the like, Polish the, victory lap? He does the whole. He does the Polish victory lap around the front stretch. It's really cool. Like I'm like get. I'm like man. You know, that's like cool of him to do. Massive credit to Chase. He pulls up to the start finish line, gets out of the car, gets checker flag, waves it around. I'm like, wow, this is like, this is good. <laughs> I forget who was in, who interviewed him. Was it Regan Smith? Yeah. Or yeah. Regan Smith walks up to Chase Elliott. He's like, you know, you. It's been a long ride. You come back from a broken leg last year. You went winless. I know that was tough. You end your winless drought today with a big win at Texas. You had to fight off multiple cars on all these restarts. How do, how does it make you feel? And Chase Elliott's like, yeah, it feels pretty good. <laughs> like, dude, what a ball drop. God, just like. 
uh, fake it, dude. Oh my god. Like they had the sound bite of the year ready like like everyone was ready to record that moment and put it like in their new spot for whatever racetrack or the playoffs or whatever for NASCAR 7 p.m. Chase Elliott, he's back good, in the playoffs. You know, and then it's Chase Elliott. It's pretty good. <laughs> Feels like, good to win. This is the on. expectation for us. Like, brothers. Just, just got to try. Just go to IndyCar where no, none of the drivers <laughs> care. It's Ugh. so funny to compare that. And, yes, I'm going to derail the show to talk about Moto real quick. Uh, yeah, no, go ahead. Right you... earliness. So, last week, or two weeks ago, Eli Tomac broke his, the longest winless streak of his career it was like just under a year it just shows how much that guy fucking wins i also just swore whoops that's okay um we're we're, we're in yeah. 10 minutes or so that so was his good. yeah that was his sure. 52nd career supercross win he's second all time and like eli tomac his entire career has gotten crap for being a robot and like people joke that in the off season he just goes sits in a cave for six months because like <laughs> nobody sees him like you see him at the track and then nothing else right And despite he went like 17 races without winning and a lot of people thought he was never going to get back there, put in an absolute dominant effort, gets back on the top step of the podium. And for the first time in his career, we saw like genuine emotion out of Eli. He was like, he even said, he was like, I didn't know if I was ever going to do this again. You know, I didn't ever know if I was ever going to be up on the top step. And then Chase Elliott breaks an even longer winless streak. And he's like, oh, okay. It was. It's like, dude, I, you don't even have on. to go to a different motorsport. You you don't even have to go back yeah. over a year. You can just go back to you know Ryan Blaney winning the Coke Six Hundred and the emotion he had after that race, talking about yeah. I don't know if I would ever win again. I don't know if you know like it. It's so frustrating because I I don't even know. It's just where's the charisma? You know, like yeah. where's I don't know, like. I don't want him to fake it. I, I get what you're saying, Davey, but like, I don't want him to fake anything, but I also I know don't you. want him to just, it, it's like he's, some of these guys, they're so PR trained, you know? Mm-hmm. And I get why, but holy crap, it is becoming more and more acceptable to just say what's on your mind, isn't it? I mean, mm-hmm. for Christ's sakes, this country elected a guy that did that. With no qualifications for the job, politics aside, that's what happened, right? So just, yep. like, why why can we not accept these guys and these drivers for who they are, for, for what their emotions are raw, for what, like, it just, man, it makes no sense. And, it's, and, and that's what I saw in that moment was Chase Elliott's PR training. And I didn't even want to talk about this this much, but it just it freaking grinds <laughs> my gears to. because it's like... It, you uh, yes, you no, can agree. be the guy you are that you already are the guy and, and you're doing zero work to do it what do you imagine if you did you did some actual work chase elliott could be like superstar post- levels if he just davy davy he yeah. posted today oh go to hooters and get your 10 free wings with purchase a 10 from the freaking break room like not at a hooters like what the- <laughs> it, it, the thing we got to point out too is like we don't need everybody to be like AJ Allmendinger running laps up and down the track every time right. he wins a race. Exactly. Because it's like, I mean, you can even compare his like contemporary. Like, I mean, Jeff Gordon was very soft spoken, but he showed like genuine emotion whenever he won things. You know, Junior was kind of the same way. Like Jimmy Johnson got shit a long time for being a robot, but Jimmy at least seemed excited when he won yeah. races. Well, pl- I mean, again, and that's yeah. also like people like, like okay, I'm biased, yeah, whatever. Uh, but like, even when he when like when he won the 2013 Daytona 500, go listen to the in car audio of him post. Yeah. you can hear him screaming over the car in the in car camera. Like he very clearly was excited. Like he very yeah. clearly had a good time. The, his celebrations with his crew after his seventh championship, like it's etched into my mind. Like how he jumped into his crew and like them just mosh pitting him basically like i i'll remember that for the rest of my life chase elliott and i agree with you Joe. i don't want to talk about it either because like yeah it, it's one of those things where like i'm sick of talking about it but it's so bad like actually that i can't help it like it's impossible to miss like i thought for a little bit like it would be like like he would do the interview and it'd be like okay well i mean that was typical chase but it was like 
almost worse. Like I, it was very, very noticeable. Like the tone shift when he started talking and how bored he seemed. And it's just like, it's like, you didn't even want to be there. I don't know. It's really, it's frustrating. I don't know. It's just, yeah. And I like, don't have as much prepared. Cause I, I didn't like to talk about no, it, but it just but pisses me just, off. It's, and it, it's not it, it, to say that Chase Elliott's a bad guy or anything. I don't think that's what any of us are saying. It's just, it's like, you need to be willing. You know, I, I put it like this, you know, and this is, there's levels to everything. And Chase Elliott is at a very a much higher level than I am. <laughs> right. But I, you know, I, we've talked about this behind the scenes, but when we do broadcasts and stuff, there's a different, we talk about it, there's a different, personality on the air than there is here or th- when we're just talking that and we're not recording right that's done intentionally but when you're in front of the public and it's like the pro wrestling thing you like exaggerate details right yeah i just i just need a little bit of exaggeration chase i just I, yeah i just I agree just... Agreed. Send him to wrestling school or something. I don't know. Maybe then he'll learn how to cut a <laughs> promo. <laughs> yeah. Uh, fun nugget from this weekend, actually. Chase Elliott's team uh, performed the fastest four tire pit stop ever. Um. Yep. Wow. In the next gen era. Sub nine uh, seconds. Yeah. Yep. Eight dollar or eight dollars. Eight seconds. Uh, eight point four nine seconds is what wow. I was trying to say. Um. Very 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 fast. But yeah, they now hold the record for the fastest four tire pit stop in NASCAR Whiskey's history. He's excited. Um, someone who does not hold that record, 2311 Cruz, Perfect. either one. Oh, Tyler Reddick. Oh, my God. Tyler Reddick lost that, that race. I mean, that lost him the race. That's straight. Like, like, a lot of times you can kind of, like, point at crew stuff and, like, oh, well, you know, maybe they got back or whatever. No, that lost him the race. That was a direct effect of that. I, I, I would be sw- – like, that is – because everyone knows you have the problem, right? Everyone already associates 2311 pit crews with being bad. And I'm they sick. just go out and prove it I'm sick. every week. I'm sick of the excuse to, well, all the other teams have all the good guys hired and locked up to contracts. I'm like, well, <laughs> no, yeah, no, that's not. Go, go hire the trainers then. I don't know. There, There is, I was going to say, there's one constant in this entire thing, and it's 2311. Yep. Something's wrong operationally. Yeah. And, and I do think... Because they've changed that. Because they, they're not, now they're in house, right? The pit crew. Yeah, they've and they been were sourcing them from JGR for the last two before years. that. Yeah. Um, and I would imagine if there there is some merit to like they so they are sourcing from JGR. JGR is going to take the best guys first, obviously. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. But now that they Look have the in house thing. Yeah, exactly. And now they have the in house thing going on, and I wonder if it's like it's like any other sports team right and, and we don't talk about it like this because it's a pit crew and nascar like everyone just expects everyone to do their job singularly but like those are they're still teams mm-hmm. it's no different than a sports team that might need to gel like if they you know you you could like there's no chemistry i mean that is still a, a serviceable working unit and they need to all be in sync and perform their jobs for the next person to do their job and so that everyone can do their job quickly and easily um Maybe it's just a matter of time, but I know that doesn't bring Denny Hamlin, Bubba Wallace, Tyler Reddick any solace because they keep losing races because of it. But, you know, if I mean, it's just really hard to assign reasoning to it at this point. It just keeps happening. That's all we know. Yeah, and this is not me trying to throw Denny Hamlin or Michael Jordan under the bus because obviously there's a lot of people that work in 2311, but like... It just reminds me of a poorly coached football team because poorly coached teams make a lot of dumb mistakes. And the teams that win championships, you know, you think of the New England Patriots and the Kansas City Chiefs and their primes, super disciplined. They don't make mistakes. They don't take unnecessary penalties and they don't make bad plays. And if you keep changing out crew members and these problems keep happening, clearly it's a coaching issue, right? It's... Mm -hmm it's a training issue it's something with the team is the problem because and this is not to again not me saying that 2311 is rotten to the core or anything i you know but it's this is a consistent thing and it's extremely frustrating to watch when your drivers and your crew chiefs are growing and becoming better and better and the pit crews are still the same and they just keep making the same mistakes and it's like you said they just keep losing races because tyler reddick should have won this race running away 
Mm-hmm. And that's actually, a, you made that point really eloquently too. Like I, I didn't really think about it that way, but like the draw, like you said, the drivers and the crew chiefs and, and the race team functionally keeps improving, but we keep coming back to the same problems with the pit crew. Yep. I can't imagine how frustrating that must be. It's very frustrating. So. Yep. Thank you, Joe. Speaking from experience. Um, <laughs> it was a wild race too. I mean, talked about like Texas beating the doubters or whatever, if you want to take a Kevin Harvickism, um, Cause apparently he's part of Gen Z now. Um, I don't know. That, I feel like that race was more unpredictable because of the tire. I'm sure it's the tire's fault, but to bring back a topic from last week. Yeah. Well, that was, everybody was talking about like throughout the whole race is like how edgy and like nervous the track felt. And yeah. I mean, and we saw it multiple times late in the race with, with good Nolan spin with Bubba Wallace. It's uh, kind of spin battling for the lead with what that. happened with Ross and Byron on the last lap. Yeah. Uh, near, like half a dozen drivers spun out the exact same way. <laughs> yeah. Like it was not track conditions were not favorable to, uh, to the next gen car and tire combination uh, yesterday. I mean, it made for really compelling racing. I, I know, like I said, I know it was kind of a mess at the end. Like I get why some people look down on that, but, it is really compelling knowing how hard it is and, you know, knowing like, like that sketch, like, especially when Denny Hamlin sailed it off on the outside or, or not on the outside, but like kind of sailed it off like a lane up trying to get the air. But you know, that's like the trickier part of the racetrack. It's like, yeah, is he, he's probably not good. And then he didn't hold on to it. And, you know, and, and every other time that happened yesterday in general, it was good. I, I don't mind that. Is Texas back? Uh, <laughs> We'll wait, we'll wait and see. Nobody but. knows. Yep. Yep. So I think it was a better race, but it's still, like, it wasn't fully single groove. Everybody needs to be on the very bottom line or else you're in the fence. But Right, yeah, yeah. Still, you know, two-thirds of the track was unusable. Yeah. So. Yeah, that, that part does look kind of silly. Like, <laughs> like, it's so much racetrack and like everyone's in the bottom two lanes <laughs> it, it was yeah it was funny when when and it was specifically when i saw blaney spin and he you know they have all the hash marks up by the wall i was like why are those even there like nobody's <laughs> using that like if you're up there what well, you're in trouble like don't just save yourself the maintenance don't paint it it's crazy it's how it. bad that resin like or whatever pj1 like ruined yeah. that surface though yeah. you know like it's <laughs> it's insane yeah um oh my gosh Xfinity race though that was that was a fun Man. finish. Pain. That was a really fun race. <laughs> I would like Ryan Sieg to. Um, Ryan Sieg was almost the first Ford to win a race this year. Um, <laughs> that is insane. That's a crazy. This, that's the state of affairs right now. <laughs> um, I don't Man. know. Sam Mayer won. Yeah, that's way less exciting than a Ryan Sieg win. Ryan Sieg should yep. just put him in the wall. Like, he probably should have put him in the wall off four, but you I know, understand he, that he didn't. That's I, I kind of like that he didn't, even though he But didn't. then in his post-race, yeah. he's like, I tried putting him in the wall. <laughs> yeah, on the front He, he did across the line, yeah, yeah, but it was too late. And, like, massive props, too. Like, the easy way would have been to just chastain him and just ship him into the fence. But, like, yeah. what do you mean chastain I appreciate, him? We know, we know Ross. <laughs> <laughs> Don't act like you don't know that. What do you mean? But like, what do you mean but, by I that? Mean, but massive props for him just trying to put a move on Mayor and race him straight up. Mm-hmm. It's just like how many? Like, <laughs> I know people have been kind of down and out on Ryan Sieg the last few years because he's he has his fair share of mistakes. But like, how many times is this dude gonna get this close to winning a race? And yeah. like, <laughs> he keeps getting closer and closer. Like, eventually, it's got to happen. Like, you can't get any closer than that. Yeah, and it's not like <laughs> like like his cars aren't amazing race cars like i see a lot of people saying how much he sucks and how like oh but he hasn't won yet that's like saying like oh the rick ware car hasn't won yeah yet. how many like, how not... many races did dave blaney run before he finally won a bush race <laughs> exactly it's, okay. yeah exactly and it's it's stuff like that but man he was very close i mean once i saw mayor was catching him i'm like okay well there's really nothing you can do about this that's a jrm car they have every possible tool at their hands to make sure that car doesn't wear the tires out as much as that 
fucking RSS car probably does. He, and like, like it was just inevitable that he was going to catch him. I was just hoping he could hold him off long enough. He could have tried to take the air off of his nose a little bit better because like he just refused to move lanes. He just stuck to his yeah. lanes, which was kind of yeah. like... Hey. That was interesting because he was wrapping the bottom for a while and then he moved up, I think, when he saw Mare was catching him, uh-huh. thinking that Mare was running a lane up. But then Mare started running the bottom and he didn't move back down to the bottom. Mm-hmm. And I think it was because, um, like, personally, I think it was because he didn't want to be, because we see this every year at Texas and it, for some reason, always seems more extreme at Texas, but how the inside car loses the air on the spoiler and wants to spin. Mm. Um, I understand maybe running a lane up, not wanting to get yourself in that situation, Um but also, when the car, when 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 the one car is that much better than your car at that point, like you gotta, at Hail that Mary. point, you just gotta become a roadblock. Yeah, yeah. Like, there's no no amount of air is gonna do the job for you at that point. I feel like. like but, I think it. I think it might also just be like lack of experience battling for wins like that. Because I mean, immediately what comes to my mind is that 2017 Dover race where Chase Elliott just got <laughs> stuck behind Ryan Newman. And Kyle Busch drove right around him on the outside. And it's, I, I feel like if you're an inexperienced, I don't want to say inexperienced, but because Ryan Seeks won't run like 400 races, right? Yeah. But like when you're not used to leading in the final five laps, right? You think, I'm going to stick to my line because this is where I'm fastest. And I don't think he necessarily has that that in his head of like i need to move around and take away like my greatest weapon right now is not running my fast lap it's taking away sam mayers right yeah yeah so but but it was a I, fantastic finish mm-hmm. yeah and a, and just a good race in general but yeah like i it makes me mad that that's the way the race finished like in that order but it don't take away from like how fantastic of a finish that is absolutely it's good so. stuff kyle bush won the truck race do we care it was a decent truck race. It was. Yeah. Texas puts on half decent races for how much of a mess it is. Yeah. <laughs> Let's yeah, go here shame. twice. No. <laughs> let's not do that. Um, all right. Well, let's go. Also, oh. I was going to say, I'm looking through the truck series results. How is there a guy named Memphis Villarreal who ran that race? <laughs> we have a Memphis and a Lawless in the truck series. Dude. Right <laughs> What are we doing? Stop asking questions. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right. Well, we can go from the shop, I guess. Oh, and... I'm actually ready. Dude, nailed it. Um, so charter negotiations are still ongoing. Teams are in agreement amongst themselves. We talked about the track stuff last week and the tracks taking... 65 percent of the revenue or something crazy teams are pushing to get like 40 percent 45 percent is what i heard yep um nascar is more than willing to uh to give up with their tracks in isc uh sounds like smi is the 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 group that's not willing to give it up (laughs) uh which shocker shocker that's that's uh marcus smith's group um Jimmy Johnson was talking about this this weekend, and that's kind of why I, I bring it up because it sounds more and more like this is going to be something that gets decided in September. That's the vibe that I got from it too. Which is rough. I mean, it's only rough if if they make it rough, right? Like, I kudos to the teams for like staying strong in all this because I feel like if this was ten years ago, they would have like backed down. Yeah, I um, agree with that. But also, they still don't hold a lot of the cards. Like, this new car, NASCAR in theory could just put a bunch of cars together and hire some drivers and go race, right? Like, would they want to take on all that cost? Probably not, but they, no. but they could is what I'm getting at. Especially when you consider the fact that then they would get all the revenue that the teams get, plus the revenue that the tracks get, um, to put into the racing. And then also sponsorship revenue. So, um, you know, who knows who holds all the cards? Nobody. Nobody knows. <laughs> that was that was the point. I feel like, I feel like the answer is nobody holds all the cards. I feel like the cards are just so spread out that... 
everyone feels like their hands are tied behind their back. Yeah. NASCAR put us in a box. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I freaking hate that. <laughs> All right, put us in a box. We don't know what to do. Ah, oh, what should we do? Figure it out. That's your job. Um, <laughs> the tires are wearing more. What do we do? This is NASCAR's fault. <laughs> well, what the hell, Goodyear? You brought us a tire that wears out that we've wanted forever? What the hell? <laughs> Why did you ask for it? <laughs> <laughs> um, what if it was actually Goodyear, like, purposely did that and didn't tell the team so that way we would have a race like that to be like... What if it was all an inside what you guys job? Wanted. I have no idea what you're getting at. What if it was an inside job? Okay, what's the like what 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 does Goodyear gain from that? Um Go ahead. The ability to make tires that don't last as long and have the same <laughs> like, support. <laughs> it it is really funny from a like advertising uh perspective because the whole reason Goodyear's in NASCAR is because it's like, look at how good our tires are, and they're like, Look at how our tires wear out extremely fast. Don't you want to buy these? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. This could be you. NASCAR should, NASCAR should just make hurdle. tires. Yeah. <laughs> at least Goodyear seems moderately willing to go that direction where, like, you look at Formula One and Pirelli, where Pirelli had. Pirelli, I think it was 2013, the year they were having a real stinker, and they put the 2012 yeah. tires back into regulation, and the season sucked after that. That was a good time. Yeah. Stinky. Um. The CW is broadcasting the last seven races. I'm sorry, eight races yep. of the Xfinity Series, including the regular season finale and then through the playoffs. Um, it'll be produced by NBC, but then broadcast on the CW. Interesting. Um, so I don't know if the reason why this is happening has been stated, but um, Saturdays are for college football in the fall. Mm-hmm. And NBC has a larger package of Big Ten games this year and Notre Dame football. Um, so I think that's kind of what happened is they're like, well, we don't really want to devote any resources, any more resources than we have to, to NASCAR. So we'll, um, because they only have two linear networks now, right? They only have NBC yeah. and USA. I wouldn't be surprised if you see fo- college football on both of those channels at the same time this year. Um and that's kind of what led to NASCAR getting the getting the push to the CW. Or it could also be the CW is trying to bolster their sports programming, which is also a thing they've been doing. It could be both, too. A mixture of both, yeah. Probably perfect storm for, yeah. uh, for those parties. Um, oh, you guys like how you can see Whiskey's face in the very corner of my screen? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's got like a big piece of fluff sticking out of his mouth right now. Oh, no. <laughs> um, I did like how a lot of people were theorizing that it was because of the Summer Olympics, and I was like, say that phrase back again summer (laughs) olympics you know the summer olympics that we take two weeks off of for yeah you know those summer olympics yeah um where we don't race for two weeks just play indycar and do that like every week summer olympics hey indycar's back this weekend as you didn't know (laughs) long beach indycar's scheduling is like guys look the olympics could be any week now we got to be careful so (laughs) nobody knows when they start (laughs) I'm pretty sure they race during the Olympics. Do they? I think so. Let's see. When? What race? I thought there was like it's another huge gap. End of July, right? All right? Let's see. The Summer Olympics are from... It's end of July. Uh, end of July to the beginning of August. And they race... Uh, <laughs> July 21st. Uh, okay, so that's no. Right okay, before. no, they, they bookmark do. it like perfectly. Yeah. Okay, all right, all right. Okay. Good job, Indy Car. You did a good job. You did a good thing. They did. You could have done did. something really silly though. Um, but uh, yeah, so I think it's good. I, I think it, it'll work for both parties. Um, remember, the CW is free. Um, you can get it for free on your phone, on your internet-enabled device, or on an antenna. So. Um, that's good, people. That's a good yeah. thing. That's a good thing. Free TV. Also, because we're not going to talk about it, but we mentioned it, IndyCar is at Long Beach this weekend. Make sure you give it a give it a watch. Or it's don't. Going to be a good weekend. No, don't let watch. let don't IndyCar watch die. Beach. Just let it die. <laughs> don't don't encourage them. <laughs> <laughs> Just watch the Indy 500, and then they'll be able to 
sustain themselves off of that. That's what they've been doing for the last 20 years. They can continue to do it. At the it very least, because um, the next is this weekend too, then, right? Yeah. Yeah, at least watch IMSA. Yeah, that's owned by that. Big Evil, Big Bad NASCAR. <laughs> IMSA's trying to sell you more good racing. <laughs> did you um, did you guys see people going after Vazi for talking about NASCAR? And they're like, oh, you're not from NASCAR. And he was like, hey, who owns IMSA? <laughs> hey, people come at him like that like once every couple weeks. Yeah, who, really like he do, like he who doesn't got, work on race cars for a living. Who got hired by NASCAR? <laughs> he literally worked on the eighty four car last year in yeah. Cup. Yeah, he was literally on that crew. Like, well, how dare you talk about NASCAR? Uh, you only work on race cars for a living. Oh my god, <laughs> could you imagine? We don't even do yeah. that. Um, yeah. <laughs> Whoops. God, I wish people were that mad at us. They were for a little bit. <laughs> they tried. They tried, and then, and then, I don't. I, I still don't understand what was going on there. Um, <laughs> it was like two walls arguing with each other. It was yeah. great. It was just. And I was the wall. Apparently, you were one of the walls. <laughs> um, oh my god! Speaking of Davey, what's your bottom split moment of the week? Bottom split. Holy, I had more work problems. I don't. I don't need to go into a long Which is just work thing problems. about it, but I had more problems at work that weren't the problems that I had when I when we recorded last week. Last week was a bad week. <laughs> last week was a bad week. <laughs> last week was a bad week. We're bouncing back, though. We're doing good this week, but last week was rough. Last week was a bad week. Joe, what's your boss with my little week? Hmm. Are you just going to say, last week was a bad week? Last week was a bad yeah, week. Yeah, what's no. your boss moment? No, um... All seriousness, um, Maverick Night in America is every week on JTN, Tuesday nights. You can tune in tomorrow. Um, my bottom split moment of the week was, all right, I'm going to get some flack for this. I would just like everyone to remember that the road to hell is paved with good intentions. Um, <laughs> they did a caution cooldown clock. We were not told about it until five minutes after the show started. Um, right. Dewey and I were very confused. Mm -hmm. The race turned into a demolition derby multiple times. So uh -huh. my bottom split moment of the week is our coverage of that. But, but, um, you can go watch it over on JTN because it is pretty funny. It is pretty funny. Oh, man. Now you can hear you can hear me getting progressively more and more annoyed throughout that broadcast. Uh, <laughs> so partially is my attitude is partially the bottom split moment of the week, but also there were other things at play, so um, that we will not get into. But go watch that broadcast. Shameless plug. Matt, what was Matt. your bottom split moment of the week? Save us. Uh, I put mine in the middle so people would forget. All right. Yeah, my bottom slip moment of the week is how everybody in my life really wants me to use Instagram really badly. <laughs> uh, I haven't. I've posted, I think, one thing on Instagram since 2020, and I haven't liked a post since before then because I don't use the website. Yet, every single time I see any of my friends, our conversation almost always starts with, Did you see X thing that I sent you on Instagram? And the answer has been no for three years. <laughs> <laughs> my my old roommate asks me all the time did you see my instagram story and i'm like i don't even know how to check instagram stories that's how long i haven't been using it <laughs> if you're asking me this question it's too late because it's already gone and i didn't see it and i've never seen it and i'm never going to see it and i've been on, like that close to deleting my instagram account just so i could stop uh dealing with this except now uh my bmx team uh, communicates exclusively through instagram dm so now i have to keep it and i want to die so I just got like tricked into keeping it and like doing oh, all these things i'm s the, the only reason i still have it is a for that and b to maintain that i've been tagged in a post by tommy wiseau that's it so <laughs> <laughs> that's the only reason why i still have it that's i, I basically only have facebook for marketplace anymore so i get yeah, it same. right yeah <laughs> well i have to have facebook for jtn but that's yeah. a different well, issue. Yeah. Nah. You know? It's a different issue. Um, yeah, and I'm not going on Craigslist, so Facebook Marketplace it is. 
Exacto Mundo, mon frere. Um, all right. Well, yeah. Good talk. <laughs> that was my rant. <laughs> all right, Roach Pro moments. My Roach Pro moment. I'm going to take the lead here. Um, my good buddy Jake went out and got a new car. He's been mm. talking about wanting to get a Charger, a 2023 Charger RT for a very long time yep. in this blue metallic color. It's like a, it's like the light baby blue almost. Um, went out and got it, so that's my Roach Pro moment, him going out and getting his new car that he's wanted for years. It's nice. nice. How about that? That's pretty cool. Matthew, what's your road to pro moment? Dude, you could do something uh, so funny right now. <laughs> what is that? Don't you know someone that got a new car too? You could, you could be like, that's my road to pro moment. <laughs> well, then okay. I'd have like three, so. Well, you know. <laughs> Uh, fine, my first road to pro moment is my one of my friends bought a 2023 WRX. Yeah! Was, the other one that I just kind of audibled into was because we were talking about the Olympics. I saw a fantastic YouTube documentary about Lindsay Jacob Ellis, the uh, women's snowboard cross racer who famously lost a gold medal in the 2006 Winter Olympics by showboating over the last jump. Uh, there's a fantastic documentary on YouTube called the, that or the fall that changed everything. It's by flame is lucky. Go watch it. I almost cried. Um, but, uh, my like main road to pro moment is we have, I think four supercross races left in the season and we have a tie for the points lead and it's uh, awesome. getting insane. Uh, That's awesome. three races ago, jet Lawrence had a 21 point lead, which is just shy of a full race and going into Nashville, he and Cooper Webb are now tied. So, <laughs> Uh, this season is just getting better and better. So, hell yeah, yeah. And Davey, how about you? Damn it, I don't know if I have one. Um, it was a pretty bad, pretty bad weekend for me. All things considered, nope. You got to find something positive. <laughs> okay, well, let's go through things. Truck race was dumb. Um, I suck at Charlotte, so the USRL Cup Series race was was not good for me. Parker Kligerman didn't have any tires on his last pit stop again. Um, Jimmy Johnson. How does this keep happening, <laughs> dude? I, I'm cursed. <laughs> I'm cursed. Uh, Cole Custer ran uh, inside top fifteen all day. We almost had a top ten at the end there. He had a good run. Cole Custer had a good run. Or no, not Cole Custer. Ryan Priest. Too many. <laughs> I was gonna say I was like, since when is Davy a Cole Custer fan? I like Cole Custer. Carson Osborne he... finished top ten. Yeah. Yeah, I don't really I, like him. I was just saying. I was just, you know. Yeah. I mean, Jimmy did finish on the lead lap. He did. So. Pretty sure everyone finished on the lead lap after all those cautions. Uh, he did. Everybody but Ross. Crash. Actually, yeah. Now that I'm looking. Also, yeah. just in general, it's it's always good. Yeah. You know what? I, in, instead of because you know, Ryan Priest was the one who had a good run, Jimmy Johnson had uh, track time, and he needs that sorely in the next gen car because. <laughs> He's Howdy. making all the same mistakes that all the drivers made the first season next gen. Yeah. And he also decided to race at like the toughest track on the schedule for the next gen, apparently. Um, so <laughs> it was really great. It was really nice watching everyone see him spin out, calling him washed. And then like every other driver in the field spins out the same exact way. <laughs> really appreciate it, guys. Is, I love Twitter. Is he running <laughs> um, Dover? I think so. <laughs> He just chose the hardest tracks to run. But then he'll get to I think he's running Kansas, so, you know, it'll be a little bit yeah, easier. I think in a little bit. A little bit. And then Charlotte and then Indy. Then Indy. And then is that it? He's going to go full time again, one? isn't he? As long, man, just stick him in the damn Xfinity car. I'm begging. I'm begging. I'm pe- <laughs> Legacy begging Motor Club, please. open an Xfinity program. I'm Dude, pleading it, that Jimmy yeah. Johnson drives an Xfinity car. <laughs> oh, God. All right. I mean, it's it's nice to see him get track time. Though. That's my that's my road to yeah. pro. Solid. Well, that's this week's edition of the Fake Racers Podcast, folks. Again, we can't thank you enough, as always, for watching, for listening, for giving us some time out of your very busy schedule, whether you're listening to us at work, on the road, or while you're at home. Make sure if you haven't already, already drop a like on the podcast, drop a like on the video, subscribe, follow, do all those things to keep up to date with what we have going on here at fake racers on twitter um you can also follow at track underscore and underscore turf on youtube and twitter as well davy anything going on this week 
on your socials? Uh, we are at Indy Road Course in the U.S. Royal Cup Series. I'll be streaming that for sure. We will be there. We will be racing. We like that. Uh, do we like that track? I don't really like that damn track. Saturday, like Saturday night, 10 o'clock? Saturday night, 10 o'clock-ish, yeah. On Twitch, D7H5 or ER at the end. Um, so after you watch our JTN broadcast, you're going to go over to Davies. That's that was what I was about to get at, yes. Make sure you watch JTN first, but then say hello to me. We'll point you in the right direction. Matthew, you got anything Anything fun planned? Uh, <clears throat> oh, my voice. Oh, my God. Um, probably going to race on Wednesday. Hopefully I don't get smoked like I did this last week, so that was cool. Um <laughs> I had to race the experts, and I was competitive in my first one, and then my second moto, I was like, man, I'm uh, out of practice right now, because I got <laughs> smoked. So, <laughs> it was yeah, bad. Um, yeah, just hopefully riding my bike more, because I got a state qualifier coming up in like a week or two, so. Hell yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Thanks. Well, that's awesome. Folks. Hey, it was a good show. It good, was a good, good nice show. show. Yeah. It was quaint. Good quaint. discussion. We complained about Chase Elliott some more. Always that's okay. That. <laughs> He hasn't good. been able to do that in a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He hasn't been doing anything. Um, Still well, isn't. Some might say. <laughs> not enough. Uh, once again, folks, we appreciate you more than Chase Elliott appreciates winning a race, which isn't saying a lot, but it's still Ayo. saying something. Again, make sure you like, follow, subscribe, do all those things to help support us. We can't thank you enough for all that support. I'll see you guys next week on the Fake Racers Podcast. Bye. <laughs>